Hello and welcome to probably the final part of the series where we are doing a large scale backtest and optimization on over 500 stocks. So where are we? We set up a structure to backtest a given trading strategy. Then we vectorize it to make it more efficient and also take our code to the next level. In this part we are using our structure to split the data set and run the backtest with one pair of SMAs. I'm also quickly going over how you would set up a range of parameters so that you can run some more analysis for yourself. So in general, why should you split the data set? First of all, you want to avoid two optimistic results and see how the performance of your optimized asset or portfolio would have been on unseen data. So you run the back test on a share of the data set, e.g. data until 2019. You check the best performing stock or stocks and then you see how the strategy would perform from that date on, on that best performing stock or stocks. I was quite excited about the series. Sadly, it didn't got the necessary traction. Anyhow, if you want this series to be continued, I would have quite some more exciting things to cover, e.g. k-fold cross-validation, a deeper dive into optimization, so optimize it on a range of parameters, find the best pair and then check how it would perform and so on, and also take a look at more complex strategies. So engage with the video if you're interested. Thank you. Important disclaimer, concepts from this video are not an investment advice. Video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Alright, let's continue from where we got in the previous video. We have our vectorized function performing a vectorized backtest for a given price data frame as well as a short term and long term moving average. We then looped over all ticker symbols to create a price data frame for every single one of them. We then called our vectorized function on this price data frame for the 50 day and 100 day moving average. The results, which are simply the overall capital gains, are appended to a list, which was then transformed to a data frame called profits, containing the overall profit for that strategy for all 500 S&P 500 stocks. We then filtered for the top 50 performers and got some insane results, as you see here. So for instance, Nvidia, if you've used that strategy, would have 50x your capital, which is quite frankly, most probably too good to be true. Now the big question is, would these profits hold if you split the data set? So idea, as explained in the beginning, you just take a share of the data set, run the back tests, check what are the top performers using the strategy, and then take the exact same strategy from a certain point in time on and check if it is still performing good or if it's still yielding profits or even uh, negative profits or losses. So let's do that. So how do we, we split that? So I'm just taking a 70-30 split. So 70% is my training data set and 30% is my testing data set. So let's take our um, test data frame, which is simply Apple price data from 2010 until the last trading day. So this is the full data set containing over 3.3K rows. Now to split that, you can just take the length of that data frame and then take 70% of that. As you see, this is a floating value, so I'm doing an integer typecast here and take this number to slice my data frame. So I'm slicing that until this row. So with that, I'm getting a data frame like this. So now we see it is only going until beginning of 2019. All right. So and this is where I run the back tests on and check what are the top performers. For the testing data set, I'm just taking the data from the next row on, right? So from the 26th on. And how can I do that? I simply change the colon here. So that, that just means 
take the data set from this row on. So as you see, now I'm getting a data set from the 26th April until the last trading day, right? And now I'm just integrating this into our loop. So where's our loop? Here it is. So I'm taking a train data set by simply doing what I just showed you. So just copy pasting. So my training is simply my sub DF, length sub DF, and then until this. So as you saw, this is just until 2019. I'm making a copy here to avoid some pandas warnings. So this is just optional and same or vice versa for the uh, test data set. So I have training data until 2019 roughly. So April 2019 and testing data from April 2019 until today or the last training day. Now I need two lists here. I need a result for my training data and I also need a result for my, or the results for my testing data. So results test. So why am I doing that? You will see in some seconds. So I'm just creating a data frame out of those two lists, check what are the top train performers and then just check, okay, what is the testing performance here? So how am I doing that? I'm just taking results train append, then I'm passing the training data here and the same for my testing data. Just taking results test append and then on my testing data. All right, so I don't necessarily need that here anymore. I'm just deleting that for now. So if we run this, so once again, what does this do? It is just calculating the results over the training period. So everything until April 2019. And it's also calculating the results for the testing period. So everything from April 2019. So if I execute that, yeah, I should have commented that out but this won't take too much time here. And we can already construct our data frame. So this is basically nearly the same as before. We are just creating a data frame, then call that profit train and take the results train and then also take a column for profit test and take results test. So is this through? Yeah, it's through, through. So let's take a look at that. Some typo. Results train, results test. Ah, sorry. Okay, profits are looking like this. And now you see the profits for the training period and the profits for the testing period. And now to make sense of that, you're just taking the, let's get rid of that, the largest and largest, the five largest for the training period. And with that, you can see that over the training period, you have those assets. And then you can directly see, oh, I had, I had a typo here, sorry should be profit. Now you directly see the profit over the testing period for those assets. And what you see here is that the, or what you already see here is that the profits are distinctly less than taking the whole data set, right? But they are still quite, quite high here, right? But uh, if you, would buy an equal weighted portfolio out of these assets here in 2019, you would just take the mean profit of this one here to get your portfolio performance. So if you just take the top asset, you would get this profit. If you take uh, the top two assets, you would take the mean profit of those two and so on. But if you want to take the mean profit of that portfolio, 
you would just take profit test and then mean and then you see uh, you have roughly uh, 3x your capital or you have made 200% profit here. Now, the interesting question is, would this portfolio outperform the portfolio of those assets if you just buy and hold them in terms of sharp ratio, right? Taking the volatility and uh, return into consideration. That would be quite an interesting thing and you can already do that by uh, doing it for yourself if you've watched some of my previous videos. I will link some useful stuff in the video description, but I can also cover that in the uh, next part if you're interested in that. For now, I just want to cover what's still missing, right? So as I said in the beginning, I'm closing the series here, but I'm giving you something on the way. Now, you can also do it more dedicated, right? I'm simply taking 70% here, right? But who does say that this is the right training and testing um, share, right? Maybe it's better to take 60%, maybe it's better to take 50%. And for topics like that, you can double check with uh, using k fold cross-validation, for instance, or other techniques. But for now, I want to show you how you would do it for taking flexible parameters. So the most interesting thing now is, what are the parameters yielding the best returns taking the train test split, right? So you would extend the loop by an outer loop passing parameters. So I've covered that in another video, which I will also link or if this um, series is getting the next uh, video. So if I continue with this series, I will also cover that. But for you, now you would just need to create two ranges containing the short-term and long-term moving average, right? You can do it using raw Python. So I'm just taking for i in range uh, 10 until 110 with the 10 step, then you're just getting uh, 10, 20, 30 and so on. And then you take an inner loop for J in range, 10, 10, 10 again. Then you check is the long term above the short term. And if that's the case, you print out the long and short term, sorry, short term and long term. So with that, you're getting short, long, short, long. And as you see, you are getting all uh, windows here. So that would be the one we were testing, right? So that would be the next very interesting thing to check out, taking this to the next level, right? Pass a parameter of, uh, sorry, pass a range of parameters and then run the train test split and see what are actually the, what is actually the best pair of parameters using a dedicated train test approach. So if you're interested in that, leave a like, leave a comment. And yeah, I thank you very much for watching and I, I'm looking forward to seeing the upcoming videos. Bye-bye.